Okay, so there's a there was a really interesting question um, when we on one of the I was just grading the discussion boards. I actually think I missed grading a discussion board from two weeks ago, and I graded it yesterday. And of course, one of the requirements for the discussion board was that the students are asking questions. And one of the students asked a very good question that does come up quite a bit, and that is, do employees count as a public? And so I wanted to talk about that briefly because yes, they do. Um, I'd mentioned this in a couple of other videos as well. You have to consider all of your public. So publics are people, groups of people who are invested in some way with a, an organization. So let's let's look at corporations because that's what we're studying this week. Corporations have publics, obviously the consumer. Um, you have the stockholders, which are definitely a public. You have your suppliers, which people don't really think of as being a public, but they are because their jobs and their livelihood depends on this corporation as well. And the employees fall into that kind of a category. So employees of a corporation are a key public. A lot of times they are also stockholders. They're not major stockholders usually. They're, you know, they have some shares. So they're not, you know, they don't have huge power to wield change in a corporation, but they do have a vested interest in the corporation. And of course they work there. So they have a vital um, role in keeping the corporation thriving and making money and keeping their jobs going on and, and that kind of thing. And it hasn't always been the case that businesses, corporations treated their employees well. In fact, a little over 100 years ago, that's why you started seeing a huge rise in labor unions, and you started seeing, uh, before then, there wasn't a work week where there were five days of work and two days off. That was a result of a public employees saying, we're not going to work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. You We get to have time off and have lives and families. And so employees are a key public, and they have a lot of power. And corporation success depends on employees who respect the management. If you, and, and probably a lot of you have worked places where you didn't have a lot of respect for the people you worked for. It makes for a miserable environment. You don't get dedicated employees. You don't get the best work out of the employees, which means that the product that's being output is also not the best. So employee employers, corporations, want employees who respect the, the management. They, they want to have employees who have pride in their project products. Um, I can remember I worked for several companies back before I was teaching and, and before I went into PR. And there were times I worked for companies whose employees were very proud of their products. And I've also worked for companies who really were not proud of their products to the point that they would not buy their own products. They would buy a competitor's. That's not good for a corporation for many different reasons. One is they're not getting revenue in, right? Because their own employees won't buy their stuff. But then also their employees talk. And so reputation spread and, you know, it can hurt a corporation in a lot of different ways. So they want employees that have pride in the products and the employees that feel like they're being treated fairly. And this is true about not just corporations, all employers, but you, you want employees who feel like they're getting a fair shake. You know, you don't want, and we see a lot of examples out there. There's been a lot of, especially in the last five years, um, employee groups who were looking to go on strike because of treatment. The one that pops in my mind most is John Deere. And I think, I want to say it was around the time the pandemic started. Um, they had a lot of problems between the corporation and their employees, and it nearly shut them down. And they weren't able to ship anything out and meet any, any, um, sales contracts. And that, of course, hurts the corporation in the long run, right? So you want employees who like the company, who respect the company, who promote the company's products and the, and the company philosophy and working for the company and that thing. And yet, on average, employees have about 26% of employees in all corporations feel disengaged, they feel left out, they don't feel included, they don't have the pride, the kind of thing. 
And 40%, that's almost half, feel that a corporation or a company is dishonest. So corporations have a vast interest in fixing that problem because if you feel the per your employer's dishonest, that's going to spread out to other people as well, right? And then the corporations get a tarnished reputation. And let's face it, as you've read in the book, corporations don't have the best reputation in the world anyway. So it's very important to remember that employees are a public, they are a key part. And public relations firms and departments, you know, separate standalone firms and departments do encourage management to have policies that help the employees and recognize the employees. And they also encourage a lot of communication back and forth with employees. When you have that, these three things you get a lot more of. When you don't have that, this goes down. And then when employee relations are going down, the rest of the publics are going to get wind of that as well. And it's going to give the corporation an overall tarnished impression. So it's kind of a long-winded answer, but I wanted to address that one specifically because it's normal for people to not think of the employees of a group as one of the publics when, in fact, especially in a corporation, which is usually publicly held, um, the employees are definitely a key vital public that you want to consider. All right. Talk to you later.